Hi everyone, this is Ashnat Kothari here. So in this particular video, I shall be discussing the indicative solutions for CM money for IFOA September 2022 session. Please keep in mind uh, that there might be certain uh, numerical errors uh, which could have been there. Uh, I have tried to calculate as many as uh, time permitted, but certain calculations I had just referred to multiple students solution and from there I have used it. So the way to go through this video is ki always take a look at the comments section. We would uh, be basically pinning the comment wherein we would be pushing uh, any sort of, you know, rectifications if observed. So if you feel that any of the calculations or any of the workings are incorrect, feel free to reach out to us through the comment section. We'll definitely take a look at it. And in case there is uh, any error, we shall be pushing in the rectifications for same. So now before uh, getting started with the solution discussion for the CM1A, uh, let me just inform you that uh, at Fanatics, we would be starting our new batches from October 2nd. This is for IFOA April 2022-23 session as well as for the session which will be conducted by II post December 2022 session. Classes are going to be available in live online, live offline and pre-recorded mode. So all our students are going to get access to all of these without any additional charges. You can attend offline whenever you want to. You can attend the online classes and as well as you're going to get the entire set of, you know, video recordings for all the classes at outset itself. Currently, the offline classes are held at Calcutta only. But again, for students you know, who are outside Calcutta, it shouldn't be a debtor for you to join us. In the last two years or so, more than 90% of our students, in fact, have been based out of Calcutta. So location is something which absolutely shouldn't be an issue. So this is regarding the classes and for ones, you know, who are inclined to join our classes for the first time, feel free to, you know, uh, check our videos on the YouTube channel. So the faculty, which you will find in the video, basically me and my colleague Gunjan, uh, we are the two faculties for uh, the papers, which we teach. So it's going to remain exactly the same. And you might take a look at the Google reviews as well and see, uh, you know, if what our existing students or our past students have liked, if that is what exactly you're looking for, then definitely uh, studying at Fanatics might be the perfect answer for your actual needs. So now let's get started with the discussion. So overall first uh, comment which I like to make regarding the paper is that I will say that it was a broadly easier paper CM1 uh, not very difficult. So most of the students I have interacted with did perform very well. Some of them obviously have made certain calculation errors and all. But apart from that, this paper was fairly straightforward and uh, pretty much uh, solvable within the 3 hour 20 minutes time frame. So let's quickly glance through the solutions. Question number one, calculate showing all workings 3.5Q 56.25. So here's the solution for same. Your a common mistake with a lot of students it was, you know, they actually refer to the AM92 tables or the ELT uh, mail tables or some any other tables. That's a frequent, uh, you know, common mistake which a few candidates do perform. So again, keep in mind that you are going to be awarded step marks. I mean, ideally, you should be, uh, you know, being awarded step marks by the examiners. So in case of any mistake where your final answer is not matching, it's not that you're going to get zero for it. You would be getting marks, you know, for certain steps. Like I have outlined the main steps involved. Then next is question number two, which is sort of a, uh, you know, you need to describe the cash flows uh, with respect to the like, uh, you know situation they have mentioned there. So I will say it's broadly book workish type question. Next question number three, we need to calculate X. So let me quickly go through the solution. So this is the equation. Note that I have been working in uh, months over here. If I'm not, no, I have been working in years only itself here. The Anvati factors. So X is coming out to be 2025.58. Next question number four, describe in words the meaning of the following and then calculate the required probability. One of the questions which, you know, so far I have interacted with students. Few of them did uh, found difficulty in solving part two. More so because, you know, uh, many students have this thing in mind key the questions of joint life or the questions relating to competing risks. These have been the ones, you know, which uh, quite a large proportion of students have found relative difficulty in CM1. So they have a tendency to, you know, simply skip the question towards the end or, you know, without reading the question. 
so i'll all I'll, i'll always advise never do that just because you feel you are uh, very strong in a particular topic does not mean that you should be att attempting its question in the examination first and just because you feel you are weakly prepared for a particular topic doesn't mean you should uh, leave that question for the end always read the question and judge the question on its merit in my experience i'll say you know certain papers i've sat for for the topics which i felt i was extremely unprepared for or you know i wasn't uh, let's say very sure about everything related to that topic there have questions come you know which were extremely straight forward and i ended up scoring full marks in them so always judge uh, a question on its merit and instead of you know going with uh, any sort of pre assumptions you know we are going to solve question from this particular topic that particular topic and so on so let's quickly glance through the solution part 1 this is the broadly you know the way you should be describing this particular product and part 2 this is the integral expression either you know any of these either first one or second one know that if you are using the second one you will need to have to split q into 1 minus t uh, 1 minus p and then solve accordingly so i have not shown the intermediate steps of performing the integral that's you know fairly direct mathematical uh, you know procedure so the answer which i'm getting is 0.523203 again keep in mind if you observe any sort of numerical errors or any other errors please you know feel free to let us know uh, properly through the comments box we'll be definitely taking a look at it and pushing in the rectifications in case we find merit in the argument next is question number 5 so let's take a look at it this is my random variable i mean i uh, cannot you know uh, um, lay more focus on the importance of describing a random variable for all these questions once you have random variable in place thereafter i'll say things become a lot more easier whether we want the mean variance or any other statistical figure out of it so this is it and for part a and b i have given the sign as well what should happen again you know whenever questions ask without performing any calculation what should be if you have spare time in exam i'll say always use the calculation and that might be just a way for you to know the answer if you are not being able to apply it logically and in case you have done it this might be just another way to you know self check whether your particular explanation is tallying with the numerical results as well or not so question number 6 over here again uh 3 year spot rate to your discrete forward rate and then the gross effective annual redemption yield so one thing i'll want to you know uh, emphasize on is i was interacting with a couple of uh, my students recently so whenever you know questions come in this way show that the annual gross redemption yield on this bond is approximately 4.29% you can directly pick up this you know 4.29% you can put that up and then you can calculate the price coming out of it and then you can compare it with the actual price and if they are very similar generally you might observe you know differences in let's say maybe second third fourth decimal point that is fine that is due to rounding errors but obviously if they are uh, you know extremely same i mean that is sufficient to show that then yes that the gross redemption yield on this bond is 4.29% it's not necessary to use goal seek function of excel or you know trial and error method using the tables functionality of calculator whenever it is you know show that this might be the rate just use that rate you know to uh, you know uh, kind of perform the relevant exercise so these are the workings for question 6 Price is coming out to one twenty eight point nine. I realize you know few of students who had made certain errors they got something like one twenty eight point nine four, one twenty nine so on. And in the next part, even using that, it was you know fairly giving four point two nine percent. So this is the equation. Now when I put four point two nine percent in the RHS and calculate in the calculator, I am getting it as one twenty eight point nine till one decimal place only. Next question number seven, part one, standard theory. I will say free four marks for all of you. I mean. little bit of time might have gone maybe on typing it apart from that there is nothing new and part 2 theoretical but i'll say you know uh, logical theoretical something which we use by solving the questions this is what they are trying to explain six marks then next question number 8 so this is the loss random variable which i am having In part two, just finding the EPV and equating it to it's given as four percent of the and EPV of premiums. So this is the entire expression which I'm getting over here. 
and the on solving i'm getting premium as 1336.75 uh, then moving forward to question number 9 these are the workings for it part 3 is a fairly standard comment you know uh, I mean, this is a typical question coming from uh, profit testing or zeroization. You know, comment on the results. Uh, you just need to check the applicable interest rate used for discounting as well as used for reserving. And then on the basis of that, you need to comment whether we expect the NPV to decrease or, you know, increase or remain the same post zeroization. Then we have question number 10, which is basically calculating total profit. So this is the equation for first calculating the reserves in part one. In part two, we need to use the recursive form, total money the insurer has at the end of the year minus the total money it pays out at the end of the year. I'm getting total profit as 15882.59. And then the last part was basic commentary. And then this is finally the question number 11. Again, keep in mind, there are multiple ways of coming up with uh, equation. There are different equations as well. I mean, all are similar ultimately, just different ways to represent it. Now I have done also a timeline for all of you. Like this is the most efficient way I understand. I always try to find directly the present value at time zero in most circumstances, unless it's specific case and you know, it might be more efficient to use something else here. Um, you know, I kind of, uh, using, you know, preferred this particular route so that here my intention was to get single term of R itself. So this was the reason there are other ways as well. Wherein, you know, I could have tried to find everything at, let's say time zero itself, no discounting. Like here, there is discounting for 16, 32 years. So there are multiple ways. My here, uh, main, uh, you know, uh, while I was solving this question, my main thing was, okay, I'll try to keep R in a single term itself because I need to find R. So instead of keeping it in two terms, adding it, you know, I, I feel this might be the more efficient way to solve the question. So on solving, I'm get, I was getting R as 8475.43. Then these are the workings for the later parts. So overall, this was it. Uh, I hope all of you did find this particular video extremely useful. Uh, please do subscribe to our channel so that you are updated with all the relevant contents we keep sharing. Uh, don't forget to like this particular video if you find it useful and do share it with your peers as well, you know, who might have appeared for CM1. And uh, obviously do leave a comment in case you want us to add anything to our videos, you know, videos on solution discussion. Please let us know. We'll try to incorporate those. We try to keep these videos very short, uh, not going into the explicit, let's say, you know, uh, workings of the all questions, unless we find a question very different, very tricky, then, you know, uh, uh, we do take the effort to explain it in that particular video. Apart from that, this is all the inputs we have got from a lot of students. They like these videos to be very crisp so that the main criteria is just to take a look at the workings and, you know, whether the calculations are correct or not. And it helps them, you know, to take a more informed decision regarding the preparation for next session instead of waiting for the results for the next 10 weeks or so. So I hope that again, uh, you all did find this video useful. Uh, please keep in also in mind uh, that uh, right now we are offering attractive early bird offers to students enrolling for uh, classes for the next session. These are available only if you enroll till September 30th. So, and these are, you know, customized to an individual student. Uh, there are different uh, early bird offers. So depending on which papers you have cleared so far, you know, we'll be giving the best offer we might have. Uh, apart from that, you know, uh, that that's, I will say that's all it from my end. Again, hope that you did find this video useful and we would be shortly releasing the indicative solutions uh, for other papers as well over the next coming few days. Thanks everyone.